If you permit me, I have to guess. The first one is that you picked the wrong guy, which is pretty common. Not only in U4, but as an excuse that a cheater girlfriend will give you. Not that you have a girlfriend, of course. The second one is that you are a really D&D freaker and want to play Aragorn even if it's not exactly that kind of role-playing game. Whichever one is you, welcome to Running Clock U4 Guide and prepare yourself for the most enjoyable game of your life as Aragorn. For the states, give the man a privilege. Religious diplomat, supremacy over the crown, increased levies, free enterprise, and in debt to the burgers. Recruit troops to the plate of manpower and summon the diet. Choose the recovery manpower, and if you don't get it, go for the best one that suits you. And finally, seize land. Because we intend to rely on mercenaries, we'll be slacking once. We go to Nosebi the Byzantines in order to prevent the autocucks to get the seed of the war desire. So no advisor course until you get a stability back to at least one. Hire the ship admin advisor and the diplo rep advisor. You can go for improved relations if you don't have a diplo guy. Focus admin and royal marriage burgundy. If Burgund has rival you, restart the game. You literally haven't even paused it yet. Allay Austria. Send a royal marriage to France. And later, ally both France and Burgundy. Get your troops into the ship and send them to the Asian Sea. We will be waiting a little bit before getting rivals. So for now, just improve relations with Naples. And after you already set your alliance, start to build a spy network in the autocucks. Hire the cheaper mule guy as well. With your alliance already set, Declaring Byzantium for an OCB. And move your ships to Constantinople. Note that they might even disband their troops, making their war even easier to us. Just make sure to get into Constantinople before the Ottomans attack, otherwise you'll not be able to vassalize them. When your ruler die, Navarra will become a PU of yours. And after a few months, Naples will get an event that we need to choose between letting them free or maintaining the personal union, but with some liberty desire, always choose to maintain the PU. And just like that, not even a year in the game, you already have minus 3 stability. This is fine, believe me. And now we can already get to the clergy, the church sanctuaries and expansion of zeal as well. Hmm. Not on my watch, baby. After consolidating a few troops, recruit the Guerra Company. We will be using them in order to siege Moria and after in the war with the Ottomans. In the meantime, keep boosting your stability. Oh yeah, AI moment. I'd recommend that you build some more Trigales in order to naval barrage Gelibolo if you need it. After you take all the forts, now is the moment to wait to see what the autocucks will be doing. The first option is that they will attack in Byzantium as well, making for us the easier scenario, which will make us able to call our allies in order to beat them. Or the second option, which they attack one of the Anatolian nations. In that case, you'll be using our naval supremacy to trap them in Anatolia, thus making an easier war for us. The following wars will be in the southern bits of France or the northern bits of Africa. Either of them is fine, but I do recommend that you attack Tunis because they only tend to ally the Ottomans quite often, and we don't want to fight them that quick after our first war. As well for the trade centers that will greatly improve our economy in the midterm. So in order to accomplish that, I will be making some plans. Unfortunately, the Ottomans just decided to start by attacking Dukadir. But another unexpected guest decided to join us, and if Epirus is so willing to take that decision, it's better that we answer as well. For the peace deal, vassalize them, and take Athens for herself. Money on top of that is welcome. 
and now that Atreus is in fact attacking all of our vassals, who will take control of the war is you. So quick, wipe their army and annex them right away. Remember what I say about Tunis? Forget that. Promise is not alive with the French anymore. And we do need to wait until Orgali is finished building and the Turkish troops cross to Anatolia. So we'll be finally using our vassalized Navarre mission, which will give us some nice clans and some temporary modifiers if to get Navarra as a vassal or a PO. All the heavy lift of the war will be given by Burgundy. We indeed want them to grow in size. So for that, declare for Ox and call Burgundy by promising land. And Yonk. With both your land and naval force in position, declare for the conquest of your vassal corps, Gelibolu, and march right away for the fort. What you will be doing here is order our naval barrage and right away assault the fort. With Gelibolu down, now it's just a matter of siege down the European parts of the Ultraboros, and wait until we do get our ideal peace deal. The Autocars can be quite fearsome in the land, but cannot win over a side of rain navy. So just siege down their lands. Their army will be probably all in Anatolia at that point. Capet sieging is the best way to optimize your conquest. Unite all your troops in one place and press to detect siege multiple times, which in my case is D. Then send them all over their place. Uh Oh no, looks like my game just crashed. Just kidding. For the province peace deal, give that three province to Burgundy in order to satisfy their land desire and take that order three for us. And on top of that, some money if they are willing to. Yeah, baby, just grow. Concentrate and call the province in province. And wait for the autocucks give up. In the meantime, I'll be making some clans in Tunis. Lose a cheap advisor. Or gain some admin power. Hmm. Hard choice. What the fu- Wait. Huh. Wanna join the party, buddy? And now the and now females can become emperor. That should be so terrible to you, bro. And that was quite unexpected to be that elder. What can be done since we do have different gender rulers and we are even in a regent. I should probably explain better in my castle guide. But I beat a wedding just fire. Now we do have two choices. The first one is to make some little saves coming. See, Castile is a perfect colonizer. So they can make a bunch of new world shenanigans for us. But if you do get there early, a subject nation cannot pick exploration the year by its own. But since my game, they are being quite aggressive, and I do plan to form Spain as soon as possible, I'll be taking them right now. See that to form Spain diplomatically as Aragon, I still need to have less than 47 cities, which if right now is just 6 more. Remember that Castile starting ruler eats fit. So they are not able to generate that much of admin power. And if they manage to conquer a bunch of province, they will be faded to be behind on tech. And probably reach tech 5 only after 20 to almost 30 years of the game sometimes. So if you plan to stay as Aragorn, just wait a little bit until you get a bit ready. Save scum, the famous out plus F4, or just like me, take them right away in order to... Well... Have a better map name. And one other thing that's making it impossible to us is to even get a passive view over Austria when to get some more prestige. When the war enthusiasm reach roll, what I'll be going is for that kind of a peace deal. 
in order to both fragilize and protect the old bugs from other nations that is our ideal peace deal for now, which include all cars of our vassal, except for the capital, some province in the Bulgaria region, and if you can take some money as well, go for it. Coalition is a state of mind, don't trust anyone who tell you otherwise. In the meantime, I was built a spy network in Serbia to steal their gold mine. And size the French hate our guts, now we hate them as well. Peace England out if they not have done it yet. Our friendship with France was temporary, only to make them participate in the war with the Ottomans if they attacked Byzantium. Now we can even dissolve our alliance and declare them as our rivals by now, as well as the Ottojunks and England. Baguette, kebab, tea. If you followed my steps, now you should already have a claim the coast of gold mine. So release Bulgaria as a vassal and declare on Serbia for some juicy shinies. By now, we can already give the strong Dutch the nobility. and declare on Tunis as well. Just let us subjects deal with them while you bug Serbia. I'll become belligerent that flight as well, because I can, and want to make anyone else join the war. And now, our focus will be on consolidating a little bit. Our economy is on scrub after all. And after we get our first gold mine, that will be a little better. For our missions, just wait a little bit before clicking that button. The one that Portugal reached at least Tech 5 and big exploration ideas. We don't really have a reason to rush that view right now, so just play safe and scale a little bit before taking down the England Portuguese alliance. The war against Serbia should be quite easy as well after just unite your troops. They don't really have that great of an army, and being in Tech 3 means that sheer number is the way to go right now. So just go for the safe maneuvering of your troops until you can kick the butt into oblivion. And for Tunis, I will be just setting some objectives to my subjects work with, such as Tunis and Kev to Castile. Go get them, bud. Average Malcolm moment, if I have to say. After wiping their army, just separate your troops and fully siege them. And then go for the Bosnian stacks. From Bosnia, we only want some prestige and money as well. Just fine. As for Serbia, for annexation and max money should be just fine. And coalition-wise, we don't really care about coalition. Remember, AE is just the number. Mm-hmm, number. And now the only real guiding line of U4 is becoming clear. After all, color and name placement is the only thing that really matter. How bold of you, Hungary. I dare you, come at me. Because of the laziness of my subjects, I will be landing some mercenary troops in their capital and pray them to not get wiped. After seeing the Tunis, we want to first of all get all the trade centers that they have. We do monopolize the most part of the Valencia trade node, and thus we get almost every single ducat that we had managed to transfer to our home node. And at that point of the game, I will also change my merchant from transferring from Sevilla to Colette in Constantinople, and also start to transfer trade power from my vassals. That should give me at least one to two extra ducats per month. And slowly but surely we're going to repay our debt and get rid of the debt spiral. Which, in real life, is when bad guys came to ask about the money that you borrow, but in U4 is when you have too much interest that the interest itself make you take more loans than you want to. And let's just see, after the month take our new trade income, which is right now is not that much in Constantinople, because to get updated the transfer trade power from vassals, we have to wait at least two months. And now is considerably better, which with some more tweaks will make our balance go green. 
Now the most exciting part of you for again. Siege. What I'll be doing here is quite risky because of the aggressive expansion that we have with the Mamluks. But I will start build a spy network in Plansing in order to, well, snake my way into the Teflat gold mine. Which right now is quite a big of a deal because of the event that happens in the beginning of the game. That will make the first gold mine that Christian Aid to get hands in that's outside of Europe happens to get a hundred years boost to goods produce, which I don't even think that to have to say is quite welcome. So in order to get them, I will fabricate some clans in tank lane to well, as I said, snake my way through. Oh yeah, I do love inflation. I read had the required spy network to be the clan tank lane, which for me, it will be probably that province right here. I do want to take that way to Taflat in order to get first the trade center and get rid of the annoyance for the annoying or highlands for Dara itself is a dry land, so I don't care that much. But you know, but minus one for the dice rolls annoyed me enough in order to make me take the province. So if I do, I will attack in Tankland as well. Torgur if Ezan will be joining, but we don't really care about them. I can be in Cobalition, but in reality, I don't even think that we have enough space for the AE. Because Mamluks can be quite scary and I already start improving with them. You have to get them out of Coalition. And with the problems that we're taking for Tunis, that Tankland and Taflat. I will stack in a bunch of EU donations. And remember, in roughly 10 years, we, we need to attack the Ottomans again. And that kind of scene, you probably will have to see if you, well, aggressively attack them in the beginning. They might even lose to the Skanderbro, which is incredible, I had to say. So let a bit of space to get AE from your later conquests, okay? And just like that, we are at war with all Sunni nations in the north of Africa. Lovely, isn't I do recommend that you focus on spacing out the miners for us and then focus on being you guys. I just send my mercenary troops into that province? Tala is Tala is Sun in Sun. I don't. I don't think that I know how to pronounce that. I will be using my manpower stacks to siege them out and wipe their armies as I can. I'll probably get out of the siege to go after the Teflat stack, which can annoyingly unoccupy the province that I have already sieged. So for that, I'll be recruiting another general. Pretty please? And... Quite mid, but at least have siege and fourth shock. Where the fuck you're going? Where the get back right? Crazy ass bitch. For the nations that we don't plan to conquer right now, just take money and raw reps, and a bit of prestige if you can farm. I don't want to prolong that much, so I'm going only for money. I swear to God, don't try to run away again. Please. Yeah, finally. For your first government government reform, for your first government reform, go for noble officer corps in order to get some early arm tradition and some early arm professionalism as well, which will lay the greatest tech and improve the overall strength of our troops. Think that the autocucks don't don't feel that well anymore. <laughs> I love it. Like I said, for Tankling, I will take in that province and a bit of money as well. And yoink. Now we can already get a juicy gold mine. I can, in fact, even full annex them, but I don't think that is the play right now. Let the Berber nations for another time, right? And for the Tunisians, the trade centers and all the money that you can have. 
I know is a bit of a mess right now, but trust me, it will be worth it in the long run. Now, it's a matter of time that we wait until we can fire the auto cooks again, which is trying to consolidate Anatolia. I think that we're going to give them a harsh time. What do you guys think? In order to stabilize our economy a little bit until we wait for the gold mines to be caught, I will first disband our mercenary troops. That guys really showed us some work, but we don't need them anymore. And also, I'm going to lower the autonomy around the country. Remember that if you don't lower the autonomy of recently conquered province, it's almost like you're never conquered to begin with. Just like that, you make an almost positive balance, and if I don't pay for my troops, and more about my thoughts, voila, a gold screen, finally. Now, all they want is to wait and and try to not die from AE. Maybe also grab one or two islands like Poland, in my case. Oh, Poland or Lithuania. Hmm. I think that can. I think that I can have both of them, but I don't have the diplo slot for that. Lithuania is probably more useful right now. Yeah, I'm going for Lithuania. And Moldavia is even fighting against Hungary at the moment. Beautiful. And what you also will be doing is to sell some titles and after all seize land in order to at least pay for the cheaper loans. Now we take another burger loans and pay for more 4% loans. I will even start building some buildings as well. Remember I do have a quite incompetent consort right now, so until or her come to age you will be struggling a little bit with the Diplo power. In the downtime, what you can do with your diplomats is to set them to improve relations with all Trojan countries. And remember what I say about Tafat Goldmine? Well, now is 15% better. For some godforsaken reason, Portugal and France decided to ally each other. And I have to say that is disgusting. So for now, we want to reevaluate our options in conquer them. It will be, well, harder, if I have to say. And if your stability high, you can leave this cheap advisor to our states. As well as nobility and officer corps to the, no to the nobles if you want it. I will wait until I can get at least their integration policy and start integration my vassal, but it's a good choice. And also start building some more navies in order to get the mission done. Only because I want to get a diplo the idea? Really? Screw you. And what you want to do for your Northern Africa conquest is to add to trade company all the province. I know, it's not exactly cost efficient, but just not to have to worry about the Sunni province is enough to make me do that, to be fair. And if you new merchant, we can start transferring from Tunis to Valencia. Will not be much, but certainly is honest work. And finally, after a bunch of years, we can start to go on some Jewish goods lower the autonomy and boost at least 5 to begin with and later 10 but right now I will wait until I can get the Diplo technology and not fall behind that much. Oh, that is a hair. For your age ability as you might already know is just to fight wars. We do plan to conquer a little bit. And when the truce with the Ottomans has almost expired, start to gather your troops around them. I even start to build a spy network in order to facilitate even more our following wars. When you finally reach the Ford Diplotech and have the money, start to build a marketplace in both Valencia and later Barcelona. We do have a mission that we want to complete as soon as we can. We will first of all start by moving your ships into the strait between Anatolia and the Balkans. Remember. 
F1, F3 is not exactly the always go for move, sometimes you don't even have to really kill the troops, and sieging the European holdings is gonna greatly hit the economy, thus making easier to retain the war short enough to not hurt us that much in manpower. And as you might see, in terms of manpower, we don't really have manpower. And in order to not get massive aggressive expansion with the Mamluks, I will be make a quick alliance before I attack them. The Ottomans is pretty much dead at the point, but they do cost us a lot of war score. And a situation that you might not see sometimes is uh, Balkanized Anatolia. See that Anatolia is pretty much divided between Germian, Karaman, Ottomans, Kanda, and even Venice. So, in the middle of the war, to build some spy network in Kanda, Germian, and maybe even Karaman. After the Ottomans war is over, I'll be right away attacking them as well, in order to make a massive expansion. Note that I do have the Holy War CB, I don't know if the, Lithuan the Lithuanians can really beat the Crimeans, but since we do have the Temporary Holy War, which was given to us by Burgundy, they have a mission that all Christian nations gain a Holy War against the Ottomans, I'll be using that in order to greater expand it to the Anatolia side without triggering that much of unjustified demands. So, that will be declaring a Holy War. But if in your case you don't have the Holy War, go for a dinner and play safe. I will be making some YOLO movement. But like I said, first focus on sieging the Balkan parts, carpet siege them, take their capital, and just after that you go for Anatolia, okay? They should have any single troops at the side at the point in the game, so just serve yourself. As you should always do, I will be setting some objectives to my allies, such as Crimea to the Lithuanians and Coachelli to the Austrians. They will take some time to get here, so it's fine to set some things that they can reach yet. And remember, always preserve your manpower. That shit don't grow on tree, you know? In the middle of the war, I will build a spy network in Kander, Kermian, and maybe later, after I take the Coachelli and Suglefort, Kerman as well. Hmm, buddy, I... I don't think that is... You know, the right choice. I kind of see him down your nation. Are you sure they want to stay here? Hmm, maybe they I know something that we don't know, right? Holy, now that's the general. Cars in the northern Africa are done, add that to a state and car. Not both of the problems, but on Teflat. I will be first focused on pacing out their allies and just after that fully carpet siege them. When you see a no stack nation, when you see a nation with no army, just siege one or two provinces of them and stand the capital. That should be enough to piece them out with a white piece. And now, the beautiful carpet sieging. Of course. The Ottomans really need to be perfect, right, Paradox? That's fair, of course. Remember to not be a forehead like me and just blockade the frequency, right? Do you see what I see here? AI being useful. Now, that's really a moment. For the Crimeans, take the max amount of money that you can and some raw reps if possible. As for the Ottomans, I will be taking that province, basically all the coastal lands, and I will be trying to not get that much inland province that I don't have the range to cover it. Remember, overextension can be killing sometimes. That configuration of province will be taken in order to cock block the Mamluks in expanding to Anatolia and preserve our Autobud a little more. And yoink. Remember. Coalition is a state of mind. Now we do have the CB and Kander and Germian. I will be attacking Germian first because Kander do have an ally and they are also easier to fight. But it's basically Germian, Kander, German, one after other. You already serve your purpose, dude. Don't get that in your head. When fighting multiple wars with, with minor nations, Remember to stack wipe them as soon as you can and fully occupy them in order to block the recruitment of any troops, which will basically make the war a child play. See that Kander and Garmia don't have any troops anymore and now they don't even have a chance to build a troop. So it's just a matter of waiting for the siege to be done. You're seeing what I see here? Hmm. 
Have you ever heard about the Burgundian inheritance? I hope you do. Because I don't plan to statify any of their problems and I don't have the Mr. strength to convert them, I'll be adding all Constantinople trade problems into a trade company. In order to, well, help us a little bit with religious unity. Now, I do think that is a good moment for us to build a flagship, which in my case will be a heavy ship with trade power per shipping fleet, fleet engagement width, and flagship durability. We really don't want to build another one of that. And that's probably what I should call a crime against beautiful borders. But it's optimal to say the least. Fulgarian for annexation. Money and yoink. Fulgarian is a lie to the Great Horde, which could be annoying, but I don't think that they were able to get to us, so just conquer them. Oh no, that's not that good. Hmm. Never mind. For Kendra, I'll be waiting a little bit until our cards are done to not get over 100 overextension. Isn't that a little cocky of you? Uh, I don't know if I feel that well about the fight. Never mind again, I guess. And even a white piece of, out of that. Nice. So for Kendra, we want to full annex them and take the max amount of money. You'll be the same to Caraman. I don't think I care about that. And now you are a little screw. But just for on month, okay? Relax. I can even release a retina right now, which is probably the right move. But I do plan to take the, my first idea group, a diplomatic one. And I don't feel ready enough to get rid of my alliance. So... I know it sucks. It sucks to be spending that much of admin point. But sometimes you gotta do what you wanna do. What you gotta do. And I think that I... You know, hate it. And now we can call our problems. Beautiful. It's getting better, right? I'll be right away starting focus on Diplo, and you will see why in a moment. And now, what we're gonna do is to go after the Portuguese strong. They do declare in Tanklin, so we just wait until the war is over before attacking them. Both to get the most of it via PU, because they will have some new territories that we do in fact want because of our missions. But also to trap their troops in the Africa side of the street while we do see their lands. Look that they literally don't have any more troops. So, will be a easy war. France can be quite annoying to deal with, but I do think that after the war start, we can probably call them to help us. And we do have, in fact, some quite good fort on borders. So it will not be that easy to the French invaders. So it's just a matter of waiting a little bit while we do manage our preparations. So for now, I will even start building a spy network portico for what I might even get at that point, helping us a little bit with the siege and even the aggressive expansion. And for our first idea group, I do recommend that you start with influence ideas. As you might see, we do have a bunch of vassals and subjects in general, and influence will help us both to keep them in check and also integrate them later. So, influence will be my pick. I know that I'm quite behind in deep technology, but it will be catching up later. And don't look at that, okay? Don't look. The vessel income is quite nice, the Libya desire is extremely useful, but the Diplo annexation cost, Diplo relations, and Diplo reputation is what we will be really aiming here. We can pretty much rush into the Diplo reputation, and after that, stop and pick ideas and come back to taking technology. Just try to not fall that behind, but it's not really a problem. You see, high diplotech is not that useful if you're not colonizing, and the only one that we really want is the 9 technology, which we are quite far away. So just don't care that much and try to not die to corruption. In fact, for that, I will even start rooting a little bit. 
I see you don't like winning the game, huh? Well, don't mind if I do. Because the Strait of Gibraltar is considered inland sea, and as Aragorn we do have insane galley combat ability right from the bat, I'll be sending all of my ships into straits and moving my troops into position and finally formalizing our personal union over Portugal. And now I'll finally declare for restoration of union of Portugal. Remember to keep your troops close and your navy even closer. Should be a fairly easy war. But remember that the English-French alliance is something that you don't usually see. So keep that in mind. As for the navy, you should be decimating their fleet. Yikes. Unfortunately, Burgundy and Austria is not really willing to join us. So I will try to keep that war quick. By capitalizing in Portugal. And after that, go, for, go to defend our lands. And after just a moment, after the talk about the cowards of Austria, they are willing to join. So, welcome to the party, I guess. And now, even the Burgundians decided to join our honorable matter. Remember to shift consolidated troops before the battle start in order to make them have the full strength in the battle. And now, it's time to deal with the French. Because for the first time since the glacial age, the England decided to land troops, the war started getting out of hand. So I would just peace France out with, with some money and war reparations. The ideal peace deal will be taking money, war reparations, Labour and Bordeaux. Labour in order to be able to take Bordeaux and Bordeaux to release Gascony as a vassal in order to reconquer a bunch of cars. But Burgundy is suffering a bit, if I have to say. So, money, war wraps, and yoink. And that's what I call naval supremacy. For the second wage ability, go for the improved war tax for the war tax cost reduction. That will help us quite a lot. And now that England has already peace out of Baradon, we can finally make our Portugal peace deal which will include the Union with Portugal, Algarve, Gibraltar, and Ceuta. On top of that, take the max amount of money. You can, instead of money and Gibraltar, take in Porto, in order to formulate the max amount of trade income that you can, which is probably what I'll be doing. The border will look a little messy for, a, well, a lot of time, but we can work with it. And in terms of coalition, I don't really give a fuck about a coalition. Because almost half of Europe and a big part of Anatolia, Balkans, is us. And, well, I dare that you attack me, bro. Come at me. Come! And remember, you need to start improving relations with Portugal as soon as you can. You have to not lose the personal union when your ruler die. If a PO has negative opinion of you, when your ruler die, you lose them. So, uh, so as soon as you can, improve with them. I will be releasing a retina as a vassal. And I even think that is a good point to leave the video. We do have an incredibly good setup with almost all of the Ottomans as reconquest via our vassals. Insanely strong subjects such as Naples, Byzantium, and even Castile, which can carry us in all of our following wars, and even a good economy that, as soon as I stop paying for corruption, the balance go green, and we can finally start paying for some of our loans. For a second idea group, I'd recommend that you pick admin or religious. But I strongly favor religious in order to get a powerful CB against a bunch of guys. If you take religious as a second idea, take admin as the third one. If you take admin as your second idea, take religious as your third one. We don't really need to have a military idea because the Spanish idea is broke as fuck and will carry us for the most of our battles. Keep in mind that admin and influence has a great policy that further increases your diplomatic annexation costs 
so is great as a second pink as well, but I cannot say enough that religious as a second idea to crusade against heretics and heavens is really good and the kind of meta that we want right now. That being said, thanks for watching, please leave a like and your thoughts in the comment and subscribe as well. See ya! So we are here again, huh? Thank you guys for watching so far. Here another video to you enjoy. And if you come that far, subscribe. I mean, the button is literally there.